Hey everyone! How's everyone doing? So we're having a second episode today of Re Behind the Scenes. So with Re Behind the Scenes, basically we go through uh, wh whoever the guest speaker is. They'll go through their property and they'll tell us you know, they'll, they'll tell us, you know, what renovations they did to it, what it was, if it was a flip, it was a burr, and they'll also run the numbers, and we'll also talk about the problems that they encountered on the project, uh, so it'll be a lot of fun. You'll get to see their house, and you'll also get to um, just hear about what goes on and the kind of projects they go, so I can see that TJ and Anastasia are here, so I'm just going to add them in. One sec, guys. Oh, no. <laughs> TJ, you have to update your Instagram. <laughs> it's not letting me add you. Uh, I don't know if you want to just quickly... I know the same thing happened on, a, on our previous one. TJ, if you just want to go quickly... Get onto uh, your, the Apple Store or whatever you use and just update your Instagram. Then we can get on. Because it's not letting me. It's saying that your version of Instagram is uh, an older version. It's not accepted. So while we let him just get his Instagram updated, um, we can just talk about... yeah. Uh, or TJ, I just want if you can just message me, let me know that you are going to do it, or that you've understood me. Hopefully, okay. Let's try it. Or maybe Anastasia wants. To, okay, let's see if Anastasia will it work. I think we're on. Hey, okay. can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear us? Yeah, it's, it was a little choppy, but now it's it's better. Hey guys, that was good. Quick, quick thinking. See if the other phone works, right? <laughs> One of us. <laughs> yeah. That's the good thing of having a team, right? One one of them fails, got, there's another one going. So <laughs> at least you got options. <laughs> So thanks guys for coming on for Re Behind the Scenes. So this is TJ and Anastasia, and they're going to be talking to us about their flip. So before we get started on talking about the flip, can you guys just tell us a little bit about yourselves and your experience in flipping? Uh, yeah, so um, me and Anna kind of started the company together um, around September, wasn't it? Well, we kind of talked about it in summer. Yeah. Um, I used to just be a hobby flipper. I've done about five flips on my own over the last eight years. And uh, so I was pretty experienced in our area when it came to that. And um, and has done some buying holes in... Um... No, don't say it? Okay, all right. <laughs> it's a secret. It's a secret. <laughs> But I have a few um, uh, rental properties in um, in the real estate, so I know the markets, and uh, you know, I've been always interested in doing the flips. Yeah, and then what yeah, it's great that you guys have that good deal because you come with TJ comes with flips, and Anna is a real estate agent, so it's like it comes together really well. To you guys come with like a a lot of knowledge together. Yeah. Exactly. So would you like to uh, show us what you guys have done? Sure, yeah. yeah. Just take, take you around the house, I guess. Um, we're in the kitchen right now. Oh, how do I use this weird thing that you have? There we go. <laughs> you, can have you can make it flip the, you can flip the, the okay. camera so it shows on the back camera. Yep. There you go. So this is the, uh, the entrance. Um, we had to do a lot in this house when it came to beefing up the um, the ceilings and restrapping out all the walls to bring it up to code. Um, there used to be like it used to only have wood stove heating, and uh, we we put in a furnace and ran ran ducts 
So we had to do a lot of bulkheads everywhere to get the ducts up to the second floor. Um, this is the dining room. We ended up uh, um, trying to remember. So the, the kitchen itself um, was <laughs> definitely not like this, but uh, it wasn't vented, it wasn't exhausted. Um, and there Did was you guys make it open concept or was it already uh, open? It was kind of open, um, like right where Anna's um, standing is kind of like a little half wall was out there. So that, that got changed and, and got boxed in. There used to be, um, and there was nothing here. We built that out um, to give it some more support. Um, and what yeah. about the layout of the kitchen? Did you guys uh, transform the layout or pretty much stayed the same? Yeah, there was no, there was no island and the, um, the, it was just yeah, it was just a galley style kitchen. And then right where the island is used to be the fridge. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I think the stove was right away in the corner. Yeah. So this back room, um, there was, yeah, there, it was only, it was one solid room back here. Um, and, uh, like a condemnable bathroom. Um, so we mm -hmm. updated the bathroom. We replumb everything is brand new. So brand new plumbing, um, brand new septic tank, brand new um, electrical all the way out to the road. Um, we upgraded the panel and upgraded the wiring. Um, oh, wow. All the way to the road. Were you guys expecting to have to do that or was that a surprise? Yeah, uh, yeah we no, we knew it had to be done. Um, the uh, um, it, it was it was really rough. Um, this back room, so you see there's like a little laundry, half laundry, and then back here there's uh, another bedroom. So this used mm -hmm. to be just um, about right, right where Anna was standing. It was just a big open, open. Um, area. And like a mud room or something, I guess, the backyard? Uh, yeah, because it had like one door and uh, two windows just going from the back. Yeah, the right where you see right now is where there was a, just an exterior door. And we, we reframed that in and then we moved a patio door over here. So we had nice light. <laughs> yeah, we made it way bigger. Um, That's this awesome. Whole back, yeah, this whole back room was not um, insulated properly at all. So it's all spray foamed and rebuilt and new subfloor. Um, the stuff that you can't see is the stuff that we did the most work on. So like the floor, underneath the floor here, there's is all brand new subfloor and about uh, probably about $2,000 and just subble, just just beefing up the floor and, and, and making it level. Um, yeah, so down, bedroom, yeah, so bedroom it would originally was a three bedroom, one bath. And now we have a four bedroom, two bath with a laundry room so oh wow nice um, and what did you guys use for self-leveling leveling just curious because we're also in the process of self-leveling also our main floor yeah it's it's just the, it's the bags of it from home depot so um, oh you used to uh, use the like, like the concrete self-leveling stuff yeah, right exactly yeah um back here so this there used to be trees everywhere and just a holding tank so that a lot of work was done back here. And there was about, uh, there was one huge trailer right over there. Two then there was a, like a Winnebago style trailer parked over there. There was a boat in the back. Um, two trailers. Yeah, two trailers, yeah. yeah. And just a oh, ton of junk. Yeah. Um, we had, I don't know, how many bins do we have in this place, Anna? Well, at least six for sure, but. Uh, yeah, six or seven bins. <laughs> Um, oh wow stopped yeah. counting. <laughs> we stopped counting. so it was like a full, almost a full gut then <laughs> yep. oh it was, yeah it was beyond a full gut it was like <laughs> um the yeah this mud room was uh actually used to just literally vent it into the basement and um there used to be like a crawl space hatch over here but we that's from the garage and uh, we the uh yeah we, we drywalled it all in and um that's the garage entrance over there we cleaned up the garage too yeah uh 
the stairs. Um, so you closed up the, you said there was a crawl space, so you closed up the crawl space? Um, yeah, so it, yeah. it only needed, uh, so we have access from the crawl space from the, in the, from the basement and in the garage, but there used to be this mm. door down in the mudroom. Sketchy one. Yeah, it was really sketchy. <laughs> so we just framed it in, made it a nice little nook to, uh, to, yeah, it's for, yeah, to be able to put, shoes, put their shoes and stuff. The um, yeah, that's true. Question from, uh, uh, they're asking where, where is the property located? Yeah, so it was in Victoria Harbor. So um, we're about 20 Victoria Harbor. minutes. Is that like close to Midland? Yep. yep, yep. So you're about 10 minutes outside of Midland and you're about 25 minutes outside of uh, Barrie, north. So okay. up here, so we added a, uh, a bathroom up here. Um, it's kind of a tight spot, so we, we did a little... Um, it doesn't feel like tight anymore. It doesn't feel tight anymore, but... Uh, I was going to say, the picture shows like it's pretty spacious, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> it was, it, it, it felt a lot uh, smaller when we were working on it, but... Uh, Port Severn area. Port Severn is a little bit farther. It's probably another 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes away from me, more, more north. Um, so we have three bedrooms up here. We have a master and, and two, two symmetrical rooms on each side. Um, all new windows throughout this place. Um, the... Only electrical, only plumbing. Yeah. So if, I don't know if you guys can tell, um, but the ceilings are kind of short, but yeah. they, <laughs> they, they, they were about maybe half a foot above Anna's head right now when we originally bought it. So we actually had to restructurally beef up the, the, um, the ceiling to add more height. Um, yeah. So this house is a, is it a one and a half then? Yeah, it's one and a half. Yep. And, um, uh, yeah, we did the his and hers closet on each side. Um, nice. Yeah. That's good that you're able to salvage some of the attic and use it for, like, to increase the height on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, it, it was uh, it was pretty cool. But the it's so close to the roof, though, that we had to use the spray foam to be able to um, get enough... Make sure it's properly insulated. Yeah, to get enough R value in there to be able to... Um, me code and we yeah. made a nice little pantry closet that wasn't here before it was yeah it was just open wasn't it or um, no but it was kind of weird yeah very unusual everything's weird in the house <laughs> <laughs> yeah like 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 we said everything and there was not a one redeemable thing in this whole house um, <laughs> so yeah i Again, like like I said, there was so much behind the scene. Like the stuff that you can't see is where we did the most work. Like when it came to um, the structure and, and whatnot, the basement was also um, a lot of work. So we had to recreate these stairs here to the basement. Um, oh yeah. So now that I'm thinking about it, I remember this this this. This whole wall here um, actually didn't exist, um, and yeah, there was a window in in like behind this wall that you see. We reframed that in and uh, created a closet here at the entrance, it was and then just a hole, basically in the basement. yeah, it was just a hole. And we rebuilt wow. rebuilt these <laughs> stairs, and uh, this is one of like you know you're talking about stuff that you have. Uh, we paid a contract to come in and be the there. We couldn't do the, the system on the outside, so we had to do it on the inside. And so what happens is they jackhammer up around the perimeter. They run some O-pipe and some uh, um, whatever to get it down, get it to the sump pump. And then the sump pump takes all the water around the house and diverts it out to wherever you, you make it go. Um, we paid one contractor to do that and he did it all wrong. So we wasted a good 
I don't know, six thousand dollars with this guy, and uh, oh my god, between the labor and materials. Yeah, between labor and materials. And so he just didn't have experience in it, and he yep. took on the work, or exactly, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. You get that's one thing you learn with these is like you get a lot of uh, people that talk the good talk, and but uh, then. You know, it was good that it happened because we found an amazing connection. And as you can tell, they do it 100% right. So, and it comes with a lifetime warranty that's transferable to the new owner. So that new owner will have peace of mind forever, which is amazing on these old farmhouses. Um, that's a good, that's really great. Yeah. And this uh, this white uh, almost thermal thermal style st stuff is an R7 value. It makes it warmer. And all any water that were to come behind it just gets trickled into the system and out. Um, yeah, to the sump pump. This and uh, on the sump pump, we we did a, a battery backup operated so that if the power ever went out, um, the the new owner doesn't uh, have to worry. We kind of went overkill, so we upgraded the the um the breaker to a 200 amp because we were, re we're re we were redoing the electrical as it was and um we we figured it's not an extra it's like an extra 200 bucks or 300 bucks to upgrade to the 200 amp um when you're already doing all that work so we we went ahead and did that um and on so the you redid all the electrical work in the full house full house yeah and yeah, when you're doing something like that, it makes sense. Like, why not just add the extra few dollars and yeah, upgrade the panel? Because it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not that expensive. <laughs> yeah, we, we even went overboard and we got some heat tracers for the roof to make sure the ice didn't build up on the because it's a low slope roof. Um, so we got heat tracers with an on and off switch to be able to. So it's like really effortless for the new owner to be able to come down, turn them on and um melt all the ice away exactly yeah so on low on low slope uh, roofs you have a lot of ice build up uh we did brand new furnace brand new duct all the way through the whole house um brand new water heater um brand new pressure uh well pump inside the well and the well pump uh sorry the pressure tank itself all brand new um yeah we had to put a couple structure posts and stuff just to beef things up um, that's awesome great job yeah. and then again stuff that you don't see is we had to get an excavator in here to dig up the the uh the well and uh refix because the well pump is on the inside and we had to do they had to dig it up to get there so a lot of work that way was was that extra work though stuff that you already anticipated uh, Let's say with the well, we were praying that it wasn't there was something broken on the inside of the well, and we were praying that it was salvageable. But then we ended up having to dig down. Uh, thank the line, thank good the lines were good uh, that were going underneath the ground. Um, but uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, you guys, it's really nice, really nice uh, job that you guys did there. Yeah. So, do you want to? Should we run through the numbers? Yeah. We also, so what did so what was the sorry you're gonna say yeah, yeah uh, I can't, didn't take you around outside but we did all brand new side in um, brand new garage and brand new roof um, <laughs> every oh so this really was like almost you made a, a brand new house my god everything <laughs> yeah, yeah if you guys have a, have a chance take a look at uh, like my Instagram at Slipping Zimco and just go through the past pictures you're gonna see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, improvements. Oh, wow. Um, okay, yeah, so let's go through the numbers. So what did you guys purchase this place for? Yeah, this is all you. <laughs> <laughs> I just do stuff. <laughs> I just do stuff. So, yeah, so the purchase price was a lot, around $230. Um, 230 okay. Yeah. With like some and then what were your stuff, closing was, costs? Yeah, so plus costs, it's 20 what? 237 236 237 so between the material and labor we had in some overheads like you know like utilities and stuff so the the total overall the whole thing it, we end up having around 387 
thousand. That, that's that's like your holding costs and your renovation. You're no, that right? with the purchase price, closing costs, material, labor, all the holding oh, okay. costs and all that stuff. That's around three hundred. Yeah, three hundred. <laughs> so if you two thirty. Yeah, so around hundred fifty between labor and material. Yeah. 150 for labor material. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, so how my and uh, how long was this project? How long did the full renovation <laughs> too long. go to? Long. <laughs> In a way, yeah. Um, so we it was about November. Is when yeah, it beginning of yeah. November. November is when it actually got off the ground, and started, and uh, about the th <laughs> third week of February it was done. That's really fast. So you you February. So you got a full house, the full house done in like two and a half months. Uh, no, November, December, <laughs> January, February. Yeah, four, four, four months. months and oh, four months. Sorry. Four and a half months. That's still that's really good for the whole house being done. What were you thinking it would be done? How long did you expect it to be if, initially? If we didn't have contractor delays and all the fires that we had to do, we had to fire wow. seven contractors. Yeah. Also, with um, the pandemic, there was a lot of delays in the material and the appliances and all that stuff. So there was a yeah. lot of delays in that. We went through like seven different kitchen companies just to get this kitchen. We weren't, the intention wasn't to do two-tone. It just ended up being two-tone because that's what was in stock. And it actually turned out oh. way nicer. Than <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the two-tone looks actually really nice. That's yeah. funny. It turned out it went, it went for good for you guys. <laughs> yeah. so. And so, uh, so... The burning question, I'm sure everyone's wondering, what did you sell it for? So we ended up... Five so, ninety. Yeah, we ended up going for five ninety, which is amazing. That's amazing. So it's your profit. So we, let, we listed it at four ninety nine, and it's got into a bidding war and sold for five ninety. Um, our profit is, uh, ended up being, after everything was all said and done... All the after commissions. Yeah. Uh, all, all, after all of that, that would be basically the profit is just over one fifty. That's amazing. You guys did an awesome job. Wow. Yeah, it was a lot of, lot of work and a lot of headaches. <laughs> Crazy stories. <laughs> but all the drama for an amazing profit, at least. You know, at least the benefit came from it. I feel like it'd be a lot more sadder if you're just like, oh, we made 20K and that's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the stress for a little measly 20K. <laughs> yeah. So keep in mind, like the normal, you know, uh, minimum what we're trying to do is 30,000 a flip. So this was leaps and beyond what we were expecting. So, uh, which is awesome. But uh, it was, it was, uh, there was a lot of times where I was like, oh my God, are we even doing this? <laughs> yeah, the guy, and uh, when the basement guy said everything was good and uh, I came in and there was literally like three feet of water in the basement and uh, and those are the moments where you're just like, oh my goodness, how the hell am I going to sell this house? And then <laughs> calm, calm down, bring in the, bring in the good guy. And, uh, and then, yeah. So what happened? Why was there, why was there that much water in the basement? So it, the, with the thaw, right? So like, this is an old, it's an old farm base, like old, ba uh, these old stone basements. So there is a lot of spots over time that they eventually, the water creeps in and stuff like that. So the, the other guy, when recommendation wise, and keep in mind the water wasn't being diverted around the house. There was no east drops. There was no nothing on this house. And when we tore off the front deck, there was this God awful front deck that went halfway across the yard with like a wheelchair access. This, when we removed the deck, there was actually like a five foot hole going down where all the water was just pooling in over the years. So um, when we, re we had to re-beef everything out, up on the inside and, and then divert the water out through the sump pump. And when, once we had a, a, a place for the water to go, then it was, it was sound because we re, we re parged everything and, and made it uh, like, in, there's no more holes um, coming into the house. It's just being able to take the water and, and make it go where it needs to go away from the house. And the ease drops uh, definitely helped a bit, um, but yeah. So. And so was it, did it flood so much? Was 
because what had happened like over the weekend and they didn't notice that it was until they came back or how did it get so yeah. so much like quickly the system, yeah so the system is supposed to go divert the water right so what happened what the what he did is he you know effed it all up and the water wasn't diverting it was just where he jackhammered around the perimeter all the water just came up <laughs> came up and leaked. Oh, so it was a mis- it was a mistake that he made. It wasn't just the house itself. Like it was actually mistakes that happened. 100%. Yeah, it was done it was because Oh, of- and this is probably the guy that you were talking about that didn't know what he was doing. Was it yeah. that guy? Yeah, exactly. Oh. And then fun the- fun. <laughs> they did the sump pump wrong, so then the sump pump wasn't shooting out. It ended up getting clogged because <laughs> there was so much junk in the in the sump pump thing. They didn't put a proper uh, sump pump pit in there. They, they, you know, hillbilly style cut up a, a barrel that was outside that was going for garbage and, and they cut it up and they put it in there and um, yeah, ran away with the money. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that is a very crazy story. Yeah. And so I guess for you, for the solution for that, you just, uh so did you do I get like with the next person that you hired to get this done um like what was the di- what differences did you do with let's say vetting them or or what or did you get like references like how did you feel let's say confident because I feel like when you hire someone and they do such a terrible job you know it kind of shakes your confidence right to try to find the next one because you're just like man I just threw off this Six thousand dollars, and now it's like I need to bring in more money. You know, did you guys do anything different when finding the next person? So, so the the next step, I called my project manager, and I'm like, you have to vet, get three references, call whoever you know, and figure out who the best guy is in town. Uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to him. His his name's Al from Ontario Web Basement Solutions, and he's amazing. Um, made it effortless came in, he's like, yeah, no worries, I got you. And, and it, was, it was just a little bit more than the, um, than the original guy, which is like, you know, we're trying to cut costs on a flip. Trying, we went with what we thought was a, a, good, uh, a good contractor. Like he was, some contractors are amazing at talking and this guy was confident, but he's one of those people that are also, can't back up their confidence. So um, yeah. Yeah, the new guy was definitely a ton of references and the lifetime warranty was like what sold us. So uh, we really- Yeah, I feel like they come with more credibility. If they're warranting it, then you're like, okay, well, you must know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So what what other problems did you come up with that happened with this property? Uh, what didn't we have problems with? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um yeah like i said contractors right so we went through um you know the one contractor i found like when i came in uh, so one of the mistakes that i made is i didn't have um, i was trying to take on too much on my plate so i didn't have a project manager on location all the time i was trying to be the project manager and run another business and trying to do everything all at once so when i brought in the project manager it was a big help but at the time I was trusting the contractors to come in and do what they're supposed to do. I would meet them in the morning and then follow up at night. And uh, having somebody in that role is definitely was, was worth the money. Definitely. And um, so for instance, I would show up at the end of the day or, or maybe I'd be able to sneak away from my other business and, and come check on the job site. And when I come and check on the job site, you know, there was a bong in the bathroom where they're, you know, (laughs) um they they ended up getting let go um oh that actually happened there was a bong (laughs) i thought that was like an uh like if it happened (laughs) (laughs) that's hilarious also had another contractor um get into a fight with his wife so he thought he would come here and spend the night and uh, (laughs) You know, you know, it, maybe if you would have asked us, I would have been like, yeah, man, no problem, camp out. But, uh, you know, just, I actually, when I found out about it, it was right before I had to pay him. And, I'm, and I actually took, I took 200 bucks off of his, of his bill. For rent. For, 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 yep. <laughs> 
that's hilarious. Oh my god, I ha- I actually had a similar thing happen, but it wasn't it wasn't that the per- the people were sleeping, they were working in the middle of the night. But yeah. mine was even worse. They brought their kids and their kids were like four and five years old. So imagine like their kids like that the parents doing drywall and they're getting dust and these kids don't even have masks or anything on. Yeah. So we Yeah. We- <laughs> <laughs> we our rough carpenter at the time was doing the same thing bringing his kid and uh, you know we had a talk and it's not <laughs> allowed at all that's not safe for your child this is a job site um but uh yeah that guy again was was caught on location like we doing um another type of drug on location um so we had to let him go and find somebody else um we had, uh, I, I made it uh, a rule I wasn't going to come in and do any renos. When I used to do flips, I did all the renos myself. Um, but on this one, I, was, I decided I wasn't going to do it. That's the only way we're going to be able to scale a business. Um, I got a call right before, like ESA, the electrical inspection had to come in. And there had to be a wall built for the electrical to be able to run, be run through. And the ESA was coming on the Monday. I got a call on Friday. Was it Friday or no? Yeah, Saturday morning, saying the rough carpenters walked off location. They're they're not coming back. Um, so I had to come in uh, and and rebuild this whole wall over here uh, to run the electrical through, which was a piss off. It's not that I couldn't do it. I was just pissed off that like okay, I was supposed to not do a single thing. Be involved so much, yeah. Come in, demo the wall, rebuild the wall. And uh, just to get it, the uh, uh, electrical inspection in, in time. And then another contractor that we fired who was doing the ins- insulation, um, when, we came, when I came in to meet the inspector to pass the insulation, luckily I came in about five hours early, six hours early, because I like to come in in the morning. And uh, I could see the exterior, like I could see outside. Um, like everywhere where I was looking, there was holes. I went around with the permanent marker and there was about, I don't know, 47, 57 spots of just holes and gaps and it wasn't tight and everything that they had to do. Because we were to put the vapor there, right? Yeah. And uh, so then I had to you know, cut it all open or remove it all, do it right. So I spent another six hours fixing their mistake. And when they asked me to come get paid, I was like, you know, this is my hourly rate. <laughs> <laughs> this and they were not happy but I was not happy as well so um, yeah it was better to just pay them to leave but I also deducted my wage out of it so <laughs> well deserved yeah, okay. so were you guys paying all your contractors hourly or or was it like you know this much for drywalling let's say yeah so, somewhere so, hourly somewhere somewhere by the job so like our finished carpenters were hourly. Um, our laborers were hourly. The um, electrical HVAC plumbing. Yeah, electrical HVAC. HVAC. Yeah, they all bill like they, they give a quote for what it's estimated to be, and then they bill you based on material and hours for all the utility like HVAC plumbing and um, electrical. Um, drywall was by the board foot, and then it was just uh, and same with the the taping was by by the foot. So. Um, so would you consider to still do the like the way you pay them let's say hourly or or like by quotes you would still continue that way like did you see any like good and bad like did you think it was good that you're paying them hourly because you could kind of let them go quickly or you know would you prefer let's say you do like a lump sum amount because so sure. the, the way we have it structured like with the laborers I like keeping the laborers hourly because you're always getting them to do random things it's kind of hard like you get it you get a job scope to do, but the job scope always, there's always more getting added on, added on. It's simpler to just keep the laborers and they're all, they're also the, you know, the cheapest to be, um, to bring on location and just clean up and whatever. Um, then the, uh, the finished carpenters, I like keeping on an hourly because there's always the same exact scenario. There's always more getting added on and added on. And there's a lot of things like, you know, kitchen install, where like they'll give a a, um, a flat rate on like it's probably like twenty five hundred bucks an average kitchen install, which to me, as someone who did the renos, it would take me six hours, seven hours to put this kitchen in. To you know that 
divide that by 2,500, you know, you're playing them, whatever. But uh, sometimes it's better to have reliable finished carpenters that you can give constant work to and, uh, and keep them busy. And you can bounce them around. Great tip. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's a great tip. Yeah. What about, so any, any other things that happened? They'd like to talk about. Talk about. We had a, a motor, like you know the, <laughs> how I said there was a boat in the back. Well, we promised this guy the scrap. Like he came to take everything away. Um, the he didn't take everything away in time, so the guys who were doing the septic tank ended up loading their stuff and, and getting rid of it. He that was a huge mess in itself because the one guy's upset and yada yada. It was a big drama. <laughs> The, the one motor that was in the back, the one scrap guy really wanted it, but somebody came at night and took it. Um, there was somebody loaded up a bin, like we had the bin out front. Somebody loaded it up about four feet higher than the bin. So they just drove by in the middle of the night and loaded it all up with their stuff. Uh, so we had to get it. Oh, like a random person. Yeah, and we had to get another <laughs> an, Maybe random. Yeah, maybe random. Maybe it was one of the contacts. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> The, what's it called? It's not really the road where the more people are driving by, so it's not like random. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah, we had to get another bin to offload to unload that bin, and then take both bins away, so we had an extra expense. That's why it's like we lost track of how many bins we had here. <laughs> That's also like we we ended up developing a good relationship with the bin guy on this job, so now he's our guy on every job and much more affordable. Doesn't charge us for. Um, charges us very minimal for doing a swap out. And uh, a lot of companies, they pay you, like each, they have a pretty high fee on the swap out, so. That's awesome, that's good. That's good that at least everything, yeah, like all this, from all the stress that you had, it came out very well. <laughs> it is so how much was the renovations? Like uh, how much over budget do you guys think or if you do know, uh, like, did it go over? Yeah, so our original budget was 135 on this. Um, we, it was about one, I would say one fifth, no, yeah, one sixth feet. Yeah, um, not including real estate and stuff. Um, yeah, just the material and the... the uh, yeah, just, yeah. Keep in mind that 135 also, we, we like to do a 10% contingency. So we added that was extra, a, like an extra 10% on top of that. And oh, so the 135 is the contingency and you went even over your contingency. <laughs> well, was that stressful for you guys? Like, did you happen to have that cash or did you have to go like through private lending or something else to, to come up with the money? Well, we, we got the money through private lending ahead of time. So we, we had the money available for us to be able to keep going. Um, that wasn't the stressful part. Yeah, money. The money wasn't no. the stressful part. It was the <laughs> having to do it twice or three times, and um, the loss on time because of having to do these extra things. Um, and at the end of the day, we want to sell a good product so that the next person doesn't have any issues for like the next whatever five, ten years. So we're trying to keep everything um, effortless for the new homeowner. So when you have things like the basement not being good or you know whatever the you you just try and th that gives us more stress than actually you know having to pay extra for something mm -hmm. so with and this was your first this is your first flip right of like you guys coming together as a team yeah. So that must have been super stressful for the two of you guys thinking like oh my god you know we got into a into a team and it's like the first one just like bombs was that that must have been super stressful for you guys right That's, was it stressful for you because i am i was the one here all the time dealing with that i was stressed <laughs> i had no idea how she felt but. <laughs> like, she called me like oh there's this issue but don't worry about it yeah <laughs> there was a, and so many issues that uh you know i stopped calling her <laughs> it's just like get it done hey by the way this <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's funny we're a little over budget 20k but it's okay <laughs> that's hilarious so with everything that happened then i'm sure you must have a lot of good tips for the viewers so you want to share like one or two tips that from this experience 
you know, what, um, like what you would like to tell people? Don't ever hire a contractor that drives a Volkswagen Jetta. <laughs> Very specific. Pretty specific. So both the rough Would you like to give the license plate too? <laughs> it's a joke. On it, yeah, honestly though, vet your contractors, um, go off referrals and try not, it, it's almost better to pay more to get somebody good um, to an extent, right? Like there is a business at the end of the day, but you know, it's better to get the best and if you can and if you can afford them. And if you're creating a business out of it, your, your brand is everything, especially in the small towns. Um, so that's why um, on this project, when we had the realtors come through, we had quite a few showings, like I think it was like between 30 and 35 or something by the end of it. We had a lot of great feedback and people afterwards asking when our next product is hitting the, hitting the market because they were so impressed with how this one was done. So that, that is great for the brand and great for um, the credibility, right? We want to, we want to give a good product. The, um, yeah, that's awesome. And I think another thing that you guys mentioned before, but I feel like I want to highlight again is like you said, or you may be saying this next, but uh, that you said, because you guys are growing your business, you guys took decided to get that project manager in, which helped you to at least make sure your pro, you know, keep track of your projects. I think that was probably also a huge thing. If, if you're going, like if someone's going to decide to just go big, like you guys are, yeah, yeah, the project manager was a huge um, stress reliever, and it also improved the the job, uh, the job site, and and time frame and everything, right? Because now people have to be accountable for somebody who's going to be there, um, and uh, yeah, so you can go different ways. You can hire a GC who also does the same thing, or you can hire a project manager specifically for the company. Uh, we went specifically for the company because this isn't our only our only flip we have a bunch on the go so um one just hit the market monday one's hitting the market tuesday next tuesday um we have an, uh, one being another one being worked on in tiny another one starting april 1st another one closing april 30th um yeah and it's just we're constantly getting deals in so being able to and tackle. I'm, I'm surprised you were doing this all on your own at the beginning, as in like managing them all on your own. <laughs> so what made you then decide between like a pro why, why a project manager to let's say hiring onto the company at GC? Like what was, what was the decisions or the differences between the two? Yeah. I mean, we, like, it's based on, on volume and the, um, you can have a GC specifically for a job. GCs like like they get attached to a job specifically. They might be able to handle more, one or more, but they also go and do their own thing with other contractors and other stuff. We wanted somebody to bring onto the team, somebody who takes pride in you know wearing the B, and uh, and and yeah, that was that was my name. <laughs> 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 what, what I'm getting at is somebody who we love it. We love it. <laughs> We want somebody to bring onto the team. We want everybody to win. We want to keep our guys winning along the way. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, we're getting tons of deals. So being able to bounce them around and manage multiple crews uh, is, is definitely uh, helpful, right? And the G if, you, if you go the GC structure in that sort of way, you could potentially be going way over budget as well. Um, if it's based on the project scope and if you're doing really big rentals and et cetera. So, um, financially and culturally, it was definitely the best scenario to, to go with the project manager. So what makes, what makes a GC more, ex more expensive just cause they're experienced, I guess, in the trade and that's why they're more expensive than a project manager. Well, usually it's based on the project, the scope of work, right? So if you're doing, uh, you know, like, let's say we have three jobs. We have like at the time of working on this, we had three jobs on the go. One, like we went over budget, it was 150,000, um, whatever it is. Usually GCs are like 10, 15%. I don't, I don't quite know their, the exact structure, but of, of that, plus you add on the two other properties that are anywhere between 70 and uh, 150K. So add those three up, or you could just pay them salary and have them bouncing around uh, between them all. Um, as long as you're being fair, 
Um, yeah. So. Cool. Very interesting. Thanks so much, guys. It was so fun to hear your stories and get to see your beautiful place. And hopefully we'll see you on in another show to see your, your next flips that are going on. I would love to see your other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye.